So I've been playing Madden FIFA and NHL a little bit over the last couple of weeks, and I just realized something. Holy crap, basketball games are never going to perfect passing. Like, ever. Let me explain. Before we start this video, I just want to say that I'm not like trying to take shots at any of the basketball video game developers out there. And you'll realize this later in the video that perfecting passing is kind of like finding the Holy Grail, or finding the Ark of the Covenant, or the other two Indiana Jones movie plots. So okay, let's begin. You ever play a basketball video game and then you throw a pass that should be good but instead it's a turnover and you're like, uh, this shouldn't be a turnover? We've all felt this. And I'm not talking about the arcade style games, so I'm kind of going to focus more on the simulation games like NBA Live and NBA 2K. Passing can make or break a video game. It's the reason why playing as Jason Kidd in NBA Live 2005 wasn't as exciting as Carmelo Anthony. And it's also why you pick Rondo on your team in like round 10 of your fantasy draft because he has the flashy patch or gold badge. I might be the only one that does this, but uh, it's my video, so yeah. For the longest time in games, you would hit the pass button and deal with whatever animation it gave you, and you just had to deal with it. Uh, here's the th here's the thing, though. Uh, the thing about basketball is that passing is situational and, at many times, not interchangeable. For example, in certain situations, you may only be able to throw a bounce pass, or in certain situations, you may only be able to throw a lob pass. And in basketball, there are many situations where you're going to have to face such decision. Imagine if in Madden you just had one button that just picked a random juke animation that you didn't have control over. That wouldn't be fun, or make that much sense. Now the good news is that basketball video game play, for the most part, is always improving over the years. However, for the most part, I've come to terms that basketball video games will never be able to perfectly replicate passing. Alright, bear with me. L let me list some examples. Alright, so in baseball games you have to designate which base you're trying to throw to. How you throw it doesn't change. You throw the ball from one place to the other, the same way, every time. Maybe the ball bounces, but in baseball video games, you're not trying to purposefully throw a bounce pass. Like, there's no button for bounce pass. I think FIFA is the most comparable to basketball when passing is involved. You have low cross, you have high cross, you have early cross, you have through ball, you have direct pass, you have give and go, you have all of that. And for the most part, all of the passing animations that you would dream of doing are in the game. And I feel like when it comes to passing that soccer does a good job of mirroring the animations in real life. Now, as for the mechanics, hey, that varies from game to game. Now for Madden, what's more important is what type of pass you throw and where the ball is in terms of what your throwing mechanic looks like. You're not out there trying to throw underhand or throw bounce passes with Cam Newton. Instead, you're more worried about throwing lobs, throwing bullet passes, hitting the receiver on the run. You're not really worried about if your quarterback's doing an overhead or three-quarter or sidearm release. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. And now I'm not trying to say that these, these games are easy. That's not what I'm trying to say. Like, I watch professional FIFA and Madden. I know better than to say that, all right? That's not what I'm getting at. There are other factors involved that add to the difficulty of those games. I'm not just trying to dissect passing and be like, well, since one is, yeah. All right, now let's think about basketball for a second. Let's think about basketball fundamentals. When you're a kid, you're taught the fundamental passes. Chest pass, bounce pass, overhead pass some real James Naismith shit. But everyone that watches basketball knows that there are more than three passes in basketball. Here, I'll name some. And those are all the ones I can just think of at the top of my head. Now, 2K considers these flashy passes, but here's the thing. If you watch all these flashy passes in real life, you'll realize that not only is it the best way to get the ball to a teammate, but sometimes it's the only way. And that's the dilemma that realistic basketball games have. There are so many types of passes in basketball, but there are not enough buttons to cover all the passing types that I mentioned above. 
Now, if you don't play basketball video games that much, you might be like, well, Kofi, what's the big deal? They don't really interfere with the gameplay that much. Well, yes, at the core, it usually doesn't damper the gameplay that much. However, it does put a ceiling on how truly realistic the game can get. And this will become more and more prominent when the games become more and more realistic. We've gone from passes being intercepted just because the defender is somewhere near the area, like on some magnetism shit, to balls deflecting off defenders, and sometimes passes still being intercepted on some magnetism shit. And as the games get more and more advanced, defensive placement will continue to increase its impact on passing. It does suck when you have an idea for a pass that you want to do and the game just does something different, but at the end of the day, Th that's all you can do. There's not really much you can do about it. Now, let's look at how a few games have tried to combat this. NBA Live 06 and 07 tried to fight this with freestyle superstar passing so that people like Nash and Kid would be able to throw fancy passes. The only thing is that the gameplay around it didn't make it seem realistic or, or even that much fun. It also didn't help that NBA Live 07 was the worst basketball game to reach Xbox 360 in my opinion. It was a good idea that they just weren't ready to fully implement. Now, I think NBA 2K18 has some of the best passing options to date. Uh, as for actual passing mechanics, uh, I don't, that's up to you. You have commands for regular passing, bounce passes, overhead passes, as well as the ability to call for backdoor cuts, off-ball player motion to get open, alley-oops, and much, much more. And you also have customizable settings for skip pass, icon passing, icon lead passing, pro stick passing, and receiver control. I usually switch the pro stick passing setting to flashy passing because yeah, that's where you get some of the riskier animations, but sometimes that's where the more logical passing animations reside. Passes that might not fall under a regular pass or a bounce pass or an overhead pass. Sometimes you have to use a behind the back pass because that's the only way you can get the ball to a teammate in that situation. It's not flashy in terms of extra, it's flashy in terms of the fact that it's not normal, but in that case, it's the most logical thing to do. And for the most part, flashy passing is just animated roulette. So sometimes I look like a genius and sometimes I just look like a damn idiot in online play. Will I ever think that basketball games will be as advanced as to where this type of passing is seamless and every pass is accounted for? No. However, I do think that one day we'll get to as close as we can. And with nearly every new basketball game in addition, we kind of do get a little bit closer. I do think that once the developers start to focus more on the defensive positioning is then when passing will go to new heights. All right, that's all for me. What'd you guys think about this video? Did I get something wrong? Uh, just let me know in the comments. Of course, feel free to subscribe and of course, new video every week. Uh, and which video game do you remember has the best passing mechanics? Feel free to let me know in the comments. And you're...